in terms of the clinical manifestations, really the most common is the erythema migrans rash, uh, which is seen in 70% of patients followed by arthritis, and then some of the neurologic complications like uh, facial palsies, neuropathy, and meningitis. Carditis is fairly uncommon, but we do see it, and it's important to, um, to look for it. So in the early uh, phase of Lyme disease, really we're looking at flu-like symptoms. So somebody who comes in with you know, fevers, chills, fatigue, muscle joint aches, um, after a tick bite, especially in the spring and summer months, we really do want to think about Lyme disease. Um, erythema migrans is considered pathognomonic for Lyme disease. However, I want to point out some uh, some exceptions. So not everybody who has Lyme disease will have an erythema migrans rash or a rash at all. Um, it's typically described as a target or bullseye lesion, but sometimes the rashes don't look that way. Uh, some of the good uh, characteristics to keep in mind uh, to differentiate them from other things is that they're usually not itchy or painful. It's, it's, pretty much a rule. If the lesion is less than five centimeters in size, it's not going to be related to Lyme disease. So it's more likely to be a bug bite or something like this. But it, almost all of the Lyme rashes are greater than five centimeters in size. So that's a very uh, important feature. It's also uh, important if you see somebody early on in disease, they may have a small lesion, but it may expand over uh, the next couple of days. So it's always important to tell patients, you know, if, if your lesion is expanding, please let us know. So this just shows you um, various uh, patients who have differing uh, rashes related to a Lyme disease. So the first one is the classic target or bullseye lesion, um, where you see like the central red area and then a clearing and then another ring. Here's uh, other ones. So this one has irregular borders and kind of a central kind of area there. Uh, this is a patient who has disseminated uh, erythema migrans, but you can see that she has a, a bluish kind of hue in the, in the center. Sometimes you won't see anything in the middle. You'll just see a clearing and then you'll see this ring. By, by far, the most common is this last one where you have this uh, slightly raised um, oval uh, confluent erythema. That's the, the most common rash that's seen with Lyme disease. So important to just be aware of it because so many of the Lyme diagnosis really come from the EM rash. This is a rash that is uh, related to a, uh, another tick-borne illness called STARI or Southern Tick Associated Rash Illness. And it can have a central clearing just like uh, Lyme disease. So it's important to keep this in mind. Uh, you may have patients who report a tick bite and then have uh, a Lyme appearing rash. So uh, again, it's called Southern Tick, tick Associated Rash Illness. The bacteria or the agent that causes it, causes it is unknown. Uh, typically patients just get the early symptoms so they can get a rash, fever, myalgia, fatigue, but they typically don't go on to go on to have arthritis, neurologic disease, or chronic symptoms. It's associated with this Lone Star tick, and sometimes patients can tell you, yes, I pulled up a tick, it's bigger than the Ixodes scapularis tick, and it has this distinctive white dot on its back. So we talked about early Lyme disease, now just the manifestations for early disseminated disease, which can happen weeks to months. So for the neurologic manifestations, they're gonna, have, they're gonna occur in 15% of patients who are untreated. Um, and they present typically with meningitis, cranial palsies, or, or some kind of radiculopathy. A bilateral cranial uh, nerve palsy, very few things do that. And one of them is Lyme disease. So if you see this in the summer, it, Lyme disease should be very high up on the uh, differential. In terms of cardiac manifestations, it most commonly varying degrees of AV block. Um, and sometimes you can also see ocular manifestations, but this is um, not as common. The late, late disease can happen months to years after the initial infection. 
and uh, about 50 to 60% of people who don't get treated with, uh, that have Lyme disease will go on to develop this late uh, Lyme arthritis. And of the folks that are treated, about 10% will have persistent arthritic symptoms despite getting one or two courses of antibiotic therapy. So this is one of the primary reasons why we treat Lyme disease uh, is, is to prevent this from happening. So it's, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people will worry about the neurologic manifestations. They're somewhat rare to see. Um, and, uh, so the, and the clinical diagnosis can be difficult. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit hard sometimes to really distinguish. Many patients will come thinking that they have late neurologic Lyme disease, but again, it's fairly rare and um, it, it's just fairly rare to see this.